Hi, my name is Chris Clark, and today I'm going to be talking to you about our paper on reactive video. Videos are a really popular medium for learning physical movements and exercise due to their convenience, cost effectiveness, and the wide variety of videos on offer as a result of the low barrier for content creation. However, videos cannot support users when exercising, and interaction on task is limited. Reaching for the remote or the device itself breaks flow and immersion, and touchless technologies such as voice can only be used for the issuance of explicit commands. To address this, we introduce Reactive Video, a system which uses adaptive video playback for a more immersive experience and to better assist in learning new movements. Here is an example showing the system in action. Adaptive video playback infers the pace at which a user is performing a physical activity and dynamically adjusts the playtime so that the video reflects the user's movements. The system is designed to work with existing video content, providing a level of interactivity without additional burden for content creators. We also incorporate real-time guidance and feedback mechanisms to better support users and encourage safe and correct form. When developing adaptive video playback, we took inspiration from direct manipulation video players, which allow users to navigate through a video by directly manipulating the content. In order to be able to use existing videos, we extract the skeleton of the instructor, for example, using open pose, and the user skeleton is captured in real time, in our case, using a Microsoft Kinect. The principle is to then match the user's joints with the instructor's to adapt the playback. However, there are unique challenges that arise when we consider adaptive video playback in contrast to traditional direct manipulation video navigation. Adaptive video playback consists of three stages. The first stage spatially aligns the user's skeleton to the instructor's in order to compensate for differences in physiological variability and or different camera perspectives between the input and recording devices. The second stage is to estimate the playtime in, in the video which corresponds to the user's movement. We use probabilistic approaches which represent information as probability distributions and which are typically more robust in the face of uncertainties than single best guesses. We investigated two approaches, a discrete Bayes filter and a particle filter both of which are capable of tracking multiple hypotheses of where we believe the user's movement corresponds to. Finally, we have the rendering stage, which is where we determine what to show to the user. To demonstrate the feasibility of adaptive video playback and evaluate the probabilistic approaches, we conducted an evaluation. We use six different exercises specifically chosen to be simple enough for inexperienced users to complete, whilst also containing challenging elements for the approaches. We recruited eight participants. For each video, users had to mimic the on-screen exercise using four different modifications, which include pauses, changes in tempo, and parts in which the user performs the exercise in reverse. When we plot the playtime estimations of the algorithm against the original video, we would expect it to track according to the tempo modification used. In general, when you take into account user error, the approaches were able to successfully adapt their playback across the videos, and overall, the discrete base filter outperformed the particle filter. Throughout the development of reactive video, we had several visitors to the research lab to test out the system and we gain some very interesting insights which require further investigation. One of which was an interesting causality dilemma. In reactive video, as the name suggests, the video is reacting to the user's movement and therefore the user is the causal source. The user leads and the video follows. However, when users are learning a new skill or movement, they will attempt to mimic the instructor. With adaptive video playback, this can lead to a causality dilemma a subtle circular feedback case where it is not clear who is leading. Is it the user or is it the video? I think this is a really exciting space to be working in and we have only scratched the surface. If you'd like to know more, to get involved, or if you have any other questions, then please email me.